Hello and welcome to Open Logic. This is System where I log in five minutes. In this video, we talk about class. And there will be several videos to go through class. This first one here will cover the basic. Many people told me that class is a difficult topic to master. I share their sentiment that it is indeed more complicated compared to other syntax. But in my opinion, class, like everything else, we just need to understand its concept to master it. So let's get started. There are several terminologies associated with class, but we will not go through their definition in an academic manner. I believe it is more important to understand what is class and what it is used for. Once we understand that, we'll be able to appreciate these jargons better. In the simplest term, class is used to create new data type. Take a look at this basic data type. This is a string, this is how we can set a string value, and to upper is a built-in function for string. And similarly, this is a cube, it has several functions like pushback and sum. Now, let's say we need a function to reverse the string. The native string type does not have that function. Similarly, if we want to get the average value of all array elements, the native queue also does not have that function. Now, either we can ask and wait for the language committee to add the functions into the native types, or maybe we can create our own type. And this is how it possibly looks like. These are new user-defined types, and these are the functions they support. Of course, this is not a legitimate code. This is just to give you the general idea. Now, to do it in a correct manner, we can use class to introduce a new type. For example, C array here. The prefix C is to show that this is a class and it should promote readability. We can introduce variables and methods into the class. For example, this C array contains an array queue and a function getMean to get the average value. We can also include other variables or functions, for example, getMode, getMedian, or getStandardDeviation. In a similar manner, we can create a C string class and introduce the reverse function, but we'll skip the detail this time. Now, we can create a variable using these new types. For example, CA is a variable or handle based on C array. We can use dot operator to access the class members like the array queue and the function get mean. And the only gotcha is we must instantiate the class variable by calling new before we use it. If not, we'll get a null pointer error. A constructor or a new function is used to allocate memory to a class handle. For example, this class C number contains a byte and therefore requires one byte of memory. When we create a class handle CN, it is null and generally does not consume memory. When we call new, the simulator will allocate memory, in this case one byte, to instantiate CN. And after that, CN can be accessed in a normal manner. We can also add customized new function to initialize a class handle. In calling new here, we'll execute the code here, which set the byte to 1. And note that this optional new function, it does not have a return type. It is supposed to return the class it represents. We can also introduce arguments into the constructor. In this example, we pass the value 10 to initialize the byte while we are instantiating the class handle. Now with that, let's look into the concept of dynamic instantiation. This example has two bytes, A and B. Result will pick A or B depending on the input signal cell. Regardless of which byte is chosen, A and B will always consume two bytes of memory. Let's say we introduce two classes to replace the bytes. The example will look like this. These are two handles instead of two bytes. We can use the constructor to instantiate the handle as needed. Only the chosen one is instantiated and therefore, very generally, only one byte of memory is in use. And this is a similar example where result is set to A for some time and after that to B for some time. A and B consume two bytes of memory at all time. If we use class, the example will look like this. A and B are instantiated only when they are needed. Even better, if we no longer need the handle, we can release the memory by setting the handle back to null. Alright, that's it for this video. In the next video, we'll look into the attribute of the class members.